Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and this video is an immediate continuation of the previous two. So in the first in the first video, we started out at Brighton Beach on the moon, and we set up a plan to get into orbit around the moon such that we could come back to Earth. In the second video, we completed the eject burn from the moon, we completed our mid-course corrections, and we completed a braking burn when we got back to Earth. So in this video, the focus is going to be on setting up our plan to get uh, lined up with uh, to get lined up with Cape Canaveral, and and then we'll then we'll start setting up our landing. I don't know that we'll necessarily get to the entire landing in one video because uh, landings require quite a bit of time because you're in the atmosphere, and you can't use much time warp when you're in the atmosphere. It just totally ruins your flight. But we'll we'll get as far as we can. So let me go ahead and switch to the full view and unpause the simulator. I don't think we really need orbit for anything anymore. So let's bring up uh, base sync on this side and we'll target Cape Canaveral. Now, okay, so we have some options here. We can orbit the Earth for a while until we have a natural pass over top of, uh, or until we're, you know, reasonably close to a Cape, to Cape Canaveral, so that, so that when we, uh, so that when we're on a certain orbit, we will be as close as we can be to passing over top of Cape Canaveral. And at the moment, based on this current list, that's going to be, you know, in five or six orbits, you know, it doesn't really matter fifth or sixth orbit because there's only six kilometer difference there. If we put in more orbits, like let's say 50, and I think you do cycle, is that how you go through this list? Yeah, so we can see if we wait, you know, way out into the future, 21 orbits, we'll be down to that number, but be, based on our inclination, we're never going to be right over top of Cape Canaveral, it's just never going to happen, because we're on a fairly equatorial uh, orbit, so the best we can hope for is, you know, it looks like something like 700 kilometers. That So that tells me that uh, this pass coming up here on the fifth orbit is probably going to be the one that we're going to want to take. Now, so, so with that in mind, let's just set the number of orbits to five. What we can also do is, as we pass over the these nodes, we could align our plane even more. We don't we don't have to have it down to zero by any means because when you're gliding through Earth's atmosphere, you have a ton of cross range. And in fact, it, if you give yourself enough time uh, gliding through the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure you can go anywhere on Earth. You know, even if you had a cross range of like three thousand. You know, I think I think I think that's definitely doable, but it does make things a little bit easier for us if we do, if we do have a passage that's a bit closer, so we don't have to like, you know, force our vessel to do so much cross range. So with that in mind, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and warp time forward, and until we have a, 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 that that passage that has us coming at least somewhat close to Cape Canaveral. Let me actually check my resources really quick. Uh, control H. So we have one day of, of of oxygen left. That's it. That's quite surprising. I, how, did it really take us six days to get back to Earth? I guess I should have filled up locks, but I didn't. Um, APU looks good. Uh, RCS is good. Main fuel is good. We used a lot more main fuel than I thought. Well, of course we did because of that enormous breaking burn at Earth. But we do need to, uh, we, we can't orbit the Earth indefinitely. You know, we've only got uh, about two days worth of O2 left. So that's just something I wanted to check to keep in mind. But we can certainly orbit for a few hours. And, and a couple, uh, five orbits, or five passes from now is not that far out into the future. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's uh, warp time forward. And, uh, and we're just going to orbit for a while until we have that a plane alignment that gets us closer to Cape Canaveral so that we don't have to do uh, such a large cross range. 
In fact, we'll actually go with uh, that orbit there. Again, you know, six kilometers is 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 irrelevant. So let me do this. Let me set my number down to two, um, or actually one. So it's this orbit. All right, so here's where we are. So when we get to the other side, when we get halfway around, that's when we're going to want to do our uh, deorbit maneuver. I guess since we do have all this fuel, let's go ahead and play with some off-base distance alignment just because we have the fuel. And we can improve that a bit. This is very... Since Earth's atmosphere is so thick, I would normally never do this. But since the... The goal here is to focus more on the landing and not so much worry about, boy, that sucks, though. The sun's going to be setting by the time we touch down, but hopefully we'll still have sunlight. Uh, so we need an, uh, uh, an anti-normal orientation here, and we won't use the full power of the main engines. So let's actually just kind of start that burn now, just using a bit of thrust. And we'll just burn until, you know, because I don't want to perturb my orbit. So you can see my PEA and APA. And if I were using the full power of the main engines, it would definitely perturb my orbit. So we did a burn for maybe five or six seconds before we got to the node. Um, it's not, that off plane's not coming down as fast as I thought, or that off base isn't coming down as fast as I thought. So we'll do, we'll do just a little bit more of a burn. Just to bring that number down a little bit. And again, we have the cross range with gliding, so we don't have to do that. But uh, we will anyway. And I'm going to say that's about it. Because I, you know, I started the burn, you know, if I, in, in, the, in the spirit of keeping it balanced, you know, I want to do about the same amount of time on both sides. So we will maybe do a little bit more over here, but maybe not. It depends what our altitude is. Okay, so let's uh, turn off that autopilot, go to retrograde, because our next maneuver is going to be a deorbit maneuver. And we're going to warp time forward using the same idea. When this number stops counting up and starts counting down, we know we're halfway around, and we can eyeball it visually because we're going to be around this point, give or take. So coming back to, say, 10. And I know it's 19-something. It doesn't go all the way to 20. And it's not necessarily exactly all the way across. Oh, no, we're counting down. There we are. All right, so we're going to set our PEA now. I think a 40 is what I usually go for. We could probably go a bit lower because we're starting off at a lower altitude than we normally do. So let's just go with uh, 7, 6... Five, four, we'll go with that. All right, now our current altitude is 166. So let's warp time forward. I'm curious what my altitude is going to be at that point. I have a feeling we're going to be at or below entry interface, though, so we probably won't be able to do any more base alignment. A, no, it's cutting it too close because we're at 128 and entry interface is 120. So let's go prograde, and the next priority is going to be to, uh, you know, button up the ship, because we have some stuff hanging out, and we need to get everything nice and closed up for re-entry. So let's turn on the APU, and let's switch over to this view. Um, so some things I know, like we have to close the retro doors, we have to close the radiator, the XR2 has like a re-entry checklist if you press 9 on the top of the keyboard. So not the numeric keypad, but the top of the keyboard. Check and it tells you, you know, what you have to do. So we, so it shows the radiators deployed, so we need to close the radiator. It shows the retro doors, or actually that was the retro doors. And then, it, so we close the retro doors and it shows the radiators deployed. So we'll close the radiator, and I think that's it. I think everything else is already closed up. Let me speed that up. Re-entry check. All systems green. All right. So re-entry check is passed. 
So we can go ahead and turn off the APU for now. Um, all right. How's my heart rate? <laughs> Getting nervous. So we don't need to worry about this anymore. Let's bring up arrow break MFD and uh, hopefully I can remember how to use this. So we want to target Cape Canaveral and this is not the view I want. And I think all I have to do is page over and mod. Nope, that's not right. I always, let me think, page and then mod. So there's, there's a certain view that I need to have. Maybe that was it, page to here and then mod. Oh my gosh. How do you use this thing? Maybe it was change the projection, no. Um, yeah, let's see. From here, no. All right, so we have, oh, that's the one I'm looking for, graph map. All right. And then let me have this information up. All right, so altitude's 113. So we can go ahead and roll so we're wings level with the planet. Because we will be, you know, coming down here in a short order. I'm just going to take a quick look outside because I think it looks really pretty. Hopefully the video playback does justice to what I'm seeing. Yeah, it looks really nice. And we will... I guess we can switch over to surface now. So, all right, let's get let's get in a bit more because we don't really, you know, there's nothing that's help nothing with the atmosphere is happening yet. So we're at 90 kilometers. And let's bring up surface MFD. So we're starting to get some dynamic pressure. All right, let me go ahead and just move my keyboard so that it's a little bit out of the way and then slide my joystick over. It's probably going to be a while yet before we need to do any atmospheric steering, but as I found when I did my initial ride, I, you know what, I wonder if I even have, there's this program called Joy to Key, plus. and if that's not running, then I don't think I have any joystick controls. Let me, I can, I can test that. Because I have one button on here to open the landing gear. Let me see here. APU yeah. Offline. So by pressing this button, I should get APU offline, but I'm not. So that means my Joy to Key program is not running, which means my joystick's probably not going to work at all. Although I think I can still use the the stick itself. So let me just test. Um, but I have to have. Oh. But I have to have AF control on. Re-entry check. All systems green. Let me bring up the temperature. And so let's turn that off. Let me turn AF control on. APU offline. Turn APU on. Turn RCS off. off. Pitch. And I just want to look at the external view. If I pitch my control, okay. So at the very least, I have. I have elevator, elevon, and rudder control. Actually, I probably don't have rudder control. No, I do have rudder control, okay. So at the very least, I have the essential controls for gliding. I just I just don't have my buttons mapped because I don't have that joy to key program running at the moment. I forgot to start it. All right, so before we get too far down, I wanna make sure I turn on the attitude hold autopilot and we want about we want to start with about, you know, 35 to 40 degrees. We'll go with that. And let me switch camera views or switch uh, here so I can see better. So this shows me I'm running out of energy quite short. So I'm going to extend my Uh, I'm going to pitch my, I'm going to settle my AOA down a bit farther. 
so that I'm overshooting the base and then I need to put in a pretty decent bank angle to bring down that off base distance and I guess that's probably one reason I would keep base sync open so that I can see my off base distance coming down and we want one orbit and we want target Cape Canaveral and we're gonna have a pretty hard bank here uh, I don't remember what the limit is but coming down through the upper atmosphere we're not going to get a lot of cross range but once we drop down you know 70 kilometers 65 kilometers and get into that thicker part of the atmosphere then our cross range will really kick in but uh, for now we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and have our vessel banked substantially to the left So now we're already getting some heat build up, so that reminds me to check my temperature. All right, we're good. So yeah, it's not real exciting at this part. Uh, there's not a lot I can do. I just have to let time pass. And I can't use time warp really because it will just, uh, if, when things start to happen, you need to be able to react super quickly. Um, I have found if you press uh, Control F2, I believe it brings up, you know, your time acceleration here, and uh, you can you can do like two to three time warp, and that's all we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to do ten or anything like that. So distance to the base coming down. Temperature is nice and cool altitude slowly coming down so yeah we just have to be patient and uh, let the vessel uh, decelerate and come down through the atmosphere and just enjoy the ride distance to the base slowly coming down altitude still coming down so dynamic dynamic pressure will be increasing so we will be getting more and more cross range the lower we get I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited actually. This is really cool. I haven't done a a deorbit and landing in the yeah, six years. I'm gonna take a quick sip of my water while all this is happening. Okay, distance is down to six hundred and seventy, temperatures are nice and cool. Altitude, uh, so we, we're, we've kind of skipped up a little bit, so we're heading where altitude's actually increasing at the moment. But that's okay. Currently we're, currently we're overshooting the base substantially, but I'm trying to make sure, I don't think I have to worry about the temperature, so I'm going to switch over to these larger MFDs for now. Um, I will start increasing my AOA, but I kind of want to drive my cross range over to make sure that I'm going to get near the base before I start doing too much with the AOA, but there is going to come a point where that's going to be significant and I'm going to have to start increasing my AOA to break faster. Let me actually do that now. Let me put in just one more tick. maybe even two more ticks and then I think if I go all eight it takes out uh, 0.5 at a time instead of 2.5 okay yeah I think so for now I'm just kind of looking at this and I can see that that line is extending you know past Cape Canaveral which is what I want at the moment because I'm still not quite sure where I'm add on my cross range. Uh, we're currently 4,500 kilometers out from the base and let me see if I can do any more bank. Okay I haven't hit the bank limit yet so I'm able to still turn a bit more 
and altitude is now coming back down. I saw that we skipped again. Let's take a look at the external just for fun. So we can see, you know, with the way we're entering the atmosphere, all that pressure is hitting that side and it's, it's kind of driving us across. All right, so. Six forty-five. I wish this was counting down faster, but it'll it'll count down quickly when we get a bit lower. So we're still very fast. Let me go ahead and take out just a little bit of uh, AOA. So I'm going to drop the nose just a little bit more with Alt Eight. Mark twenty-five. I might do that twice actually. Normally, I will be looking here at this part, but currently our target. So this zooms in on our landing site, and currently that zoomed-in view, uh, we're, we're not within the zoomed-in portion. So, you know, once the uh, distance off base gets, I don't quite know how far it has to get, but uh, it, we'll start seeing our green line appear in here, and that'll give me more, more accuracy. I kind of wish this had like a zoom level that you could set. I wonder if it does. Z minus? No, I don't, I guess that doesn't affect that window there. All right, so we're 3,000 kilometers about out from the base. 24. Traveling pretty quick. 70 kilometers, so we're starting to dip down. Now temperatures are probably going to start really heating up here. So cross range, I'm surprised that's not coming down a bit faster yet, but uh, hopefully soon. Still traveling very, very fast. So what if we, we brought our cross range down by about 100 kilometers? 2,300 kilometers from the base, that number's ticking by awfully fast. I want to see this come down much, much faster. <laughs> I think we can still make the base regardless. Um, worst case scenario, I just have to fly way up in the atmosphere for a while, do some loops, and we do have fuel. Uh, normally, I would do a fuel dump before entering the atmosphere and just do a complete dead stick landing, but I didn't dump that fuel, so we actually do have enough fuel if it comes down to that. So we're at 580, we're 1,800 kilometers out. I need to remember that this time warp is here. It'd be really easy for me to forget about that. All right, I'm going to pitch the vessel a bit. So Alt-2. I, th I think we might actually have some trouble making the base because our cross range was off by a substantial amount. Um, again, you, if I had just taken more time to glide down, but I, I thought we would be okay, but I think we're actually going to miss. And then we're, so we're going to have to basically go past and then... We'll make it work. So a thousand kilometers out. What is that? I'm not sure where we're at over the earth at the moment. Gulf of Mexico or something. Yeah. So that was probably nineteen. Okay. All right. So just a little bit longer here. And remembering that I'm at two X time warp. So I, do, I definitely want to shut that off before I try to do anything. Yeah, I think we're, we're definitely going to miss the base. Um, that's okay. I think I think we have the the velocity and the altitude to just glide and make it work. And if all else fails, we have main engine fuel to fly back home. So I, this was a learning experience. Mock 17.
So there's uh, Key West and Lake Okeechobee. Mock 16. All right. So let me see here what I want to do. Well, I guess we'll just continue cutting through the air like we are at the moment. We're going way too fast to try to, you know, do anything manual. I am maybe a little worried about that temperature. Yeah, it's cooling off. Mach 14. Okay, so... Oh yeah, the other MFD I like to have is uh, Glide Slope. Totally forgot to open that one. Mock 13. Still slowing down. I kind of feel like I almost want to level out and climb a bit so I can ensure that I get my range. Yeah, because I'm 12. past the base, so... So I'm just making a little bit of a uh, change in my my pitch and my roll here so I can maybe climb up a bit like I am now and then uh, and, and then try to turn back around a bit well actually though as long as I'm I guess as long as I bring the nose down I don't need to change my my roll because I want to keep you know driving in that direction all right, let me go ahead and pause here, even though we're kind of right in the middle of something. Let me switch to the overlay. Um, yeah, landings do take a while, um, even with the 2x time warp, and it would be taking twice as long if I didn't have that 2x time warp on. <clears throat> so you just have to be patient when it comes to landing. But uh, again, I don't like to go over 30 minutes on videos, um, and really 20 is better. But uh, with all that said, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I'm going to make another part, and I'm just going to pick up right here in the next part. So uh, with all that said, I will see you in the next part.